fire escape. Driver says the fat controller's coming home tomorrow, said James a week later. Gordon grunted. He wasn't anxious to see the fat controller. I must do well today, he said to himself as he waited to start the express. A good run today might help if the fat controller hears about it. Things did not begin well, though. Thanks to a last-minute passenger, they were late starting, which meant that Gordon missed his path at the junction and was delayed there, too. But... With a clear run after that, they flashed through Edwards Station, going splendidly. They were halfway up the hill when there was a clatter beneath Gordon's cab. Suddenly, he felt a blast of cold air in his middle, as if there were a gap between his boiler and cab. Oof! he gasped. What's happened? The fireman looked at his fire. There was a gaping hole in the middle, where the fire bars had collapsed, and a large part of the fire had disappeared. You've lost part of your fire, Gordon, the fireman explained. What a place to do it. Already Gordon was feeling weaker. Without a full fire, his steam pressure and speed fell quickly. But his driver knew what to do. Find the biggest piece of coal you can and put it across the hole, he told the fireman. That will stop some of the cold air from getting in and we'll be able to hold steam better. But hurry or the hill will beat us. The fireman hurried. A large lump of coal lay near the front of the tender. Quickly, he moved it into place with his shovel and a long steel bar. Gordon felt better at once. Now build the fire gently round the edges, said the driver. And, as the fireman did so, the driver adjusted Gordon's controls to make the best use of his steam. Right, Gordon, he said when the fireman had finished. Now it's up to you. Gordon tried his hardest, but it was tough going. I must do it, I must do it, he told himself as he pounded up the hill. He had stuck here once before and was determined not to fail again. Poor Gordon was getting very breathless. I will do it, I will do it, he panted, but he was careful not to pant too loudly in case he blew away what was left of his fire. He shut his eyes and struggled on. At last Gordon felt that the slope was easier to climb. Cautiously, he opened one eye. Yes, he was nearly at the top. I've done it, I've done it, he gasped triumphantly. The fireman mopped his brow. That was splendid, Gordon, he said, and now you deserve a rest. A signalman turned them into a goods loop and telephoned the works for a pilot engine to be prepared. While they waited, the passengers got out and told Gordon what a useful engine he was. Boko was at the works to help, and the two engines finished the journey without further trouble. At the end of the line, the fat controller was waiting for them. To Gordon's surprise, he was smiling. Thank you, Boko, he said, and thank you, Gordon, for a splendid effort. I am pleased with your work today, though certain, um, other things leave much to... But just then, a whistle blew, and the fat controller had to hurry to his carriage. Once again, poor Gordon was left in suspense.